I'm scared. I'm really scared. There's a lot of stuff going on right now that is frightening me. A lot of valuations are starting to get absurd in the stock market. We have credit card loans that are out of whack. We have auto loans that are out of whack. We have so much stuff going on that I believe is gonna start really affecting us in 2018, 2019. As you know, I've been on record many times on this channel that I do not believe there will be a recession in 2017. I'm sticking by that. I do not believe there will be a recession in 2017 in the United States of America. But the behavior I'm seeing across the board in, in, in real life, like what I see with my own eyes, and then when I look at numbers, they're correlating. And that's when things really scare me. When what I'm seeing in real life is happening and what I'm seeing on the number side is correlating with that, there's so much. We gotta get into some of this, guys. So let's talk about stock valuations first off. You know I've been on record many times saying we need a stock market correction. We need a 10, 15% down move in the stock market to get fairly valued. I believe we're at the highest end of fair value, if not uh, the slight end of overvalued at this point. You look at some stocks, right? Let's just look at some simple big companies, right? Coca-Cola is trading at a trailing P of 32. That company should be trading under a 20 trailing PE. That is absurd to be trading at a 32. You look at Pepsi, so trading at a 25 trailing PE. It's a company that should be trading at an 18, a 17. This is not a big growth company at all. This is a soda water that's been around for 8 million years. Colgate Palmolive, like, where's their business going? This is a, a very steady business. They have a trailing PE of over 27 right now. I look at these big companies and I'm like, these, these companies should not be trading at these valuations. These are the type of valuations that growth companies should be trading at. And what we have is growth companies trading at absurdly ridiculous PEs. You look at the Amazons of the world, the Netflix of the world, the Teslas of the world, they have unbelievably out, out of your mind valuations on them right now. And so we won't even touch on those. That's just like a, a given in those type of companies. But let's look at this chart here. This is the S&P uh, PE ratios. This is, goes back to the last five years. Look at how the PE ratios are rising and rising. You go back from about 2012, 2011-ish time, we we're, were under a 15, and then we popped up, popped up, and look at this chart. It's just getting higher and higher, and now we're well into the low 20s at this point. And I look at this, and I say, and that, by the way, that chart's not even accurate as far as it's not even all the way up until today's date. So we would actually be the highest of any of the last five years if this chart all the way went up to literally what we're, when this video is posted. And I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, stocks are, are getting, you know, like I said, I think we're at the highest, highest end of fair value, if not into the starting, getting into that low range overvalued. Are we at an extreme overvaluation like we were in the tech bubble in 2000? For some of you guys who might not be around, there was a tech bubble in 2000. It got real ugly. I remember it. I wasn't participating in the market back then, but I do remember, you know, seeing it on TV and whatnot and all these stocks that were so high just got killed. Are we at something like that? Absolutely. Not. We're not at something like that. That's a ridiculous overvaluation situation. But are we at a low type overvalue situation? I could definitely make a case based upon what companies are trading at for PE ratios, guys. It's really absurd. But that's not the only thing that worries me. You know, stocks is just one part of the game. The part that really worries me is the part that has to go do with the consumers. The stock market, that goes up and down. Doesn't really affect the economy overall, not really too much. Um, government, do I worry about the, the debt and those kinds of things? A little bit, but that still isn't what worries me. What drives the economy in the United States of America and every developed country out there is consumers and consumers taking out debt. If we wiped out all the debt as far as if we said you can't use your credit card tomorrow, if you, can, you can't take out a, a home loan or an auto loan, if we did that tomorrow, the entire economy would collapse in such a rate, it would be way worse than the Great Depression, like way worse than any time in history. It would just decimate the economy overnight. We're run on you and me going and spending money on stuff we can't really afford and taking out debt. That is how the US economy works and most developed countries work. So let's look at some numbers here. So let's talk about credit cards. First off, before we even get into the numbers I'm gonna show you here. I can tell you, and this is where I, I look at like, you know, what's going on in my real life. Like, what am I seeing? Not just what the numbers are, and we'll look at the numbers in a second, but like, what am I seeing? I'm seeing a mailbox I go to every single day. 
full of credit card offers from every single company out there. You've been pre-approved for this credit card. You've been pre-approved for this credit card. Come take out this credit card. Here's a loan, a line of credit, blah, blah, blah. I walk out to the, and I just throw these away. Boom, 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 boom. It's like I fill the whole trash can out by the mailbox full of them. It is absurd. My wife gets these credit card offers, the pre-approved credit card offers. She doesn't even have a job and they don't know that and they don't fucking care. It's ridiculous. My wife just got uh, one of her credit cards just up the balance. So instead of uh, her maxing out at $3,000 spending, which she doesn't spend any money on the credit cards, thank goodness anymore. Um, but she, instead of being able to spend $3,000 on this credit card, it just got maxed to $10,000 she can spend now. She doesn't even have a job. She doesn't have an income. She has no right to like have an increase like that they're doing no due diligence anymore another one of her credit cards just got bumped from three thousand to five thousand dollars she's able to spend now she has no job like there's no reason i should be getting credit card offers like crazy like i took the last what three years two two three years off from working i just started up my businesses last year like they, i was and i hardly made any money last year so and then now i'm finally making money but they have no clue that i'm making any money they're just judging off of what my you know was making when i applied for loans back in 2014 2013 things like that and i'm just like they're doing no due diligence they're just giving money to whoever the hell they want to give money to and i see it in my my own life i see people getting lines of credit credit cards that Oh my gosh, it's risky, guys. But let's let's look at not just what I'm seeing in real life. Let's look at some of these numbers here. So indebted households today have credit card balances averaging over sixteen thousand dollars. Are you kidding me? Just shy of 2008's high, which now we're going into 2017. We're probably higher than 2008's high. This is based upon 2016. Uh, and total household debt, including mortgages, has ballooned to 132,000, up from 88,000 in 2002. Unbelievable. You look at that chart here, credit card debt year over year, it's literally the highest since it's been since 2008, right before the Great Recession, guys. It's it's just, it's very worrisome when you look at that. You look at the breakdown here, and this, this just makes me sick. To bridge the gap, many Americans increasingly rely on credit cards, one of the most expensive ways to borrow. Currently, the average credit card interest interest rate is 18.76%. Unbelievably sad. And the average household pays a total of $1,292 in credit card interest per year. Ridiculous. Credit cards, that accounts for $747 billion of U.S. consumer debt. And that number is going up this year. Believe me on that. Mortgages, $8.35 trillion. Auto loans, which we're going to talk about in a minute, $1.14 trillion. Student loans, any type of other debt. It's getting ugly, guys, and this credit card epidemic is bad. It's really bad. We see over $16,000, the average household. That is that is mind-blowing to me, mind-blowing, but unfortunately, I already kind of knew that, and it just makes me sad, and what I'm seeing in real life and what I'm seeing on the numbers, they match up. They're, they The credit card companies are just giving money to whoever the hell they want to give money to, hoping everybody pays it back on time, and when the shit hits the fan and some people just start losing their jobs, Guess what's not going to get paid? The credit cards. And they're going to have massive defaults and we're going to have banks go under and it's going to be a huge financial crisis once again. Let's look at auto loans here. Americans racking up auto debt. Last year, Americans bought more new cars than ever. Given auto sales make up around a fifth of all retail spending 2016 banner year is being hailed as a sign of the burgeoning uh, consumer confidence across the country. Look at the chart here, guys. Look at the chart. Nowhere has it been even close as far as the amount of auto loan money taken out ever on that chart. And this goes back to all the way to 2003. We're at $1.2 trillion now. I mean, look at back in, let's see, right before the recession started, 06, 07, we were at about one point, just over $1 trillion back then. And now we're over $1.2 trillion and that number is going up. And I see a situation that I'm just like, the auto loans is getting absolutely ridiculous. And this is one of the reasons I can't go out there and buy any automakers. Not only do they have the huge threat of Tesla coming over the coming years, right? That's like the biggest threat to come in the auto industry in a long time. But then you look at the amount of auto loan debt and what's going to happen when some people start losing their jobs and the dominoes start falling the wrong way whenever that tab does happen. Maybe it's 2018, maybe it's 2019, maybe it's not until 2020. Guess what's going to happen? People are going to start defaulting on those auto loans and they're gonna, there's going to be a massive amount of autos out there that are available for very cheap, which then, why would anybody buy a new auto when you buy one two years old that's 
$15,000 cheaper than the new one at that point. The last piece of the puzzle here that scares me is the amount of people making too easy of money right now. Whenever the money is just flowing, it just seems like everybody's just making money. Any, but anybody that knows anything about investing, putting money anywhere just about, seems like almost everybody I know is making money right now. From stocks, from doing this, I know somebody that, a friend of a friend who's like put a thousand bucks in some speculative like Bitcoin thing that is kind of like a scam type penny stock, right? They put a thousand bucks in that and now they have $30,000 and I'm like, like what? Like there's some shit going on that is so bad right now, guys. When the money's being made too easy, that's when you went, like Warren Buffett's great saying goes, Warren Buffett's like most famous saying of them all. Be fearful when others are greedy and right now a lot of people are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. And uh, it really, really scares me when everybody just seems to be making too easy money. I get comments, I mean, I a million comments on this channel, you know, that are nice, you know, that they're, people are glad I'm helping them out and those kinds of things. But they say things like, you know, I made 10% my very first month, is that good? Like, that's ridiculously good, like, that's too good. You shouldn't be uh, able to make that kind of money every month. Like, that should be like your first year return. If you're getting that in your first month, it just proves that we're kind of in such a Goldilocks period. And then I see things that like the other day that happened when the jobs numbers came out, 138,000 non-farm payroll versus 185,000 expected and the markets went up. That stuff scares me, guys. That stuff scares me. When we, when bad news is good news and good news is great news, it's scary. It's really scary for me. So for all those reasons, I'm very scared about how all this stuff is going to play out in 2018 and going forward. I'm sticking by my prediction. I do not believe there will be a recession in 2017. But man, um, you know, sooner or later, the dominoes are going to start falling. And when the dominoes do start falling, it gets worse and worse and worse. Because when somebody loses their job, it causes somebody else to lose their job. And then the dominoes start flowing the other way. So we'll see how all this plays out over time. Um, uh, we need a stock market correction, in my opinion. That would definitely help things out. And then from there, we need uh, consumers to you know cut it off with this credit card stuff and the auto loans. And I don't see that stopping anytime until something bad happens. And when that bad thing does happen, it's gonna get ugly, guys. It's gonna get really ugly. So um, we're just gonna have to keep, you know, I'll keep updated on this, you know, over three to six months and kind of give you my opinion on how I'm feeling about things and based upon what I'm seeing in real life and based upon the numbers. Hope you guys enjoyed this day. If you just came across this channel, you may wanna subscribe. We talk personal finance. Unfortunately, most Americans have no clue about personal finance. We talk entrepreneurship. Most people have no clue about that. Stock market, we talk about that. And uh, you guys know a little bit about the stock market so i'm happy about that thank you for watching guys and have a great day